Good and tug buttholes. My name is James Reeves. You're watching TFB TV. On today's episode, we're talking about the top five long guns from the Iwa Outdoor Classic, which is a little bit like the German shot show. TFB TV went for the first time. Man, like I said in the last video, it was cool as hell. Completely different vibe from shot show. Very German, wide open, glass covered convention center, lots of natural light, well organized, not as heavily trafficked as SHOT Show, but there are still plenty of awesome guns to check out, many of which have never been in the United States and some of which never will. One sentence I use to explain the difference between IWA and SHOT Show is that at IWA, they actually leave the magazines and the guns. It just doesn't happen at SHOT Show. It was a highbrow affair, and there's some highbrow guns to match. So we're going to talk about the top five long guns from the show, the best long guns coming from Europe this year. Now, before we get started with the list, and I hate doing this at the beginning of the video, but it's very important. You'll see why in just a second. There were no commercials. There were no sponsors. You noticed that for our EWA coverage, I hope, because we paid out of our own pockets, all because you guys support us through crowdfunding sites like Subscribestar and Utreon. There's a link to both in the description. That keeps us independent. We don't have to accept money from manufacturers in exchange for positive reviews. And we get to do stuff like EWA because we get funds from you through crowdfunding. Unfortunately, at the time of filming this video, Patreon has banned us from their platform because they said we were distributing weapons, which is what they call firearms. They call them weapons, not Firearms, we do a gun giveaway every month where we give away four guns. We're adding a $25 tier. We're giving away a fifth gun only to people in the $25 tier. So we got locked out of our Patreon account. That's 1,700 patrons gone. We really need you guys, if you would, sign up for Utreon. Sign up for Subscribestar. Again, links in the description. Guys, I'm not trying to sell you gold or shitty security systems or herbal erectile dysfunction treatments. There's no... 30 second organic plug in the middle of our videos because we don't do that and we don't have to do it because you guys support us. Do me a favor, throw us a couple bucks a month, but bear in mind if you're at the five, 10 or $25 level, you are automatically entered to win one of four or five guns every single month and one of four $100 Blue Alpha gift certificates. Okay, sorry about the long ass intro. We just had 1,700 patrons get wiped off the map by stupid anti-gun Patreon. Let's get into the list immediately. Number five, and I mean never in my life did I think that I would have a gun from this manufacturer on any top five list, but I think the CZ600 Trail is one of the coolest fucking things I've seen as far as bolt actions go. And one of the neatest guns at the show. CZ rolled out the new CZ600 series of bolt actions and it was a huge affair. They had perhaps the nicest booth at the show. They had dozens of the CZ600 on hand. On top of that, they released a handful of models, each available in a number of configurations and calibers. But my favorite, by far, was the trail model. Not a big bolt action guy, but I love this. Yeah, Tell can, us about this one. I can imagine you were looking for just, just for this. <laughs> so this one is a little bit different. It's a CZ600 trail, and it still uses the same bolt system and barrels like the CZ600 hunting models. However, uh, because this is rifle that is meant for backpackers, uh, survivalists, preppers, and, uh, and people that generally like their adventure rifles, we are using more sort of military or modern sporting rifle features on this rifle to make it more convenient for like uh, the modern users. So we've got actually AR-15 magazines for caliber 223 Remington or brand two magazines for caliber 762 by 39 which means uh, they are not uh, compatible as far, uh, as far as chassis goes with the rest of the rifle, but you can still change your barrels, you can still change your bolt heads and uh, everything, uh, everything else. As you can see, the safety I was talking previously about moved to the side, it's ambidextrous, and it uses the same levers we have on brand two rifles. So this button now can operate the collapsible stock, which has four positions. So there's the collapsed one, First, second, third. Uh, it features your standard AR-15 uh, pistol grip. So I can just change it out to whatever I want. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can you can slap any of your uh, of your like. Uh, but I think the uh, the one we are providing is uh, quite nifty because we are all, uh, we also have interchangeable backstraps that are compatible with CZP09 series. 
Uh, you also have uh, ambidextrous magazine release and uh, the chassis that is uh, made uh, again from uh, glass uh, fiber reinforced polymer is connected to the draw aluminum receiver with over the top Picatinny rail and a very nice and subtle uh, draw aluminum forend that also has m -lock interface for attaching. So how cool is that? It's ultra lightweight, got a collapsible stock, it takes AR mags for 556 and 300 blackout or Bren mags for 76239 and 2MOA accuracy guarantee. But about that guarantee, the only reason CZ is guaranteeing just 2MOA is because 76239 ammo is mostly dog shit. I wouldn't be surprised if the CZ 600 notched MOA or tighter groups if you were using like match 556 ammo. I'm definitely getting one. I haven't decided yet if I want one in 300 blackout for ultra quiet operation or if I want one in 556 just to have something cheaper to shoot at longer range. It's not often that a manually operated gun really twists my bolt but the CZ 600's given me the long action, if you know what I'm saying. Number five. Now for number four, which is our controversy slot in all of our top five videos, because you don't open the list with a long gun that's technically not even a gun, but you also don't put it in the top three either. Viewers out there were absolutely thrilled with the new Norlite German Glock chassis. Um, this system is com completely different from the system you already know, like. Uh the Ronin system, mm -hmm. uh, where you basically place your complete handgun in the system. Uh, in this system, the only thing you use from your handgun is the frame and the magazine. Yeah, the, we have M-Lock slots on the six, uh, three, six, and nine o'clock position, and the charging handle is here. It's non-reprociating; it stays in place. And otherwise, as with the MP5, where you Lock it, uh, unlock it from the top, you lock it from the lower position. Because usually you have some optics here and there is, then there is no space that you come from above. You need to come from below. This is a really high quality chassis kit and so many of them in the US are just junk. You know, anybody can just make okay. their own, right? Okay. So this is a really neat kind of high end thing, but um, you know, I imagine it would be very expensive and that would probably be worthwhile, you know, in Germany yeah. with, with more restrictive gun laws. I mean, how much would something like this cost, you think, in the United States? Or how much does it cost here? Uh, in Germany, the retail price, including 19% sales tax, uh, is 1280 um, In the U.S., I, ex I would expect it to be below 1000 mm -hmm. Now, in the United States, we're used to these crappy polymer Glock chassis that aren't really anything more than just range toys, not the Norlite. This German masterworks basically a long gun by itself. In fact, the only thing it needs from your Glock is the fire control unit, which is housed in the frame. So you just plug the frame up, you're good to go. That makes it not a gun, but a gun part. So you don't need an FFL, you don't need a background check if you could buy one of these in the United States, but more importantly, in European countries, where you're only allowed to own a certain number of guns, Jesus, imagine that, this helps those poor bastards bend the rules a little bit by giving them a pistol caliber carbine without having to actually punch a hole in your guns the government allows me to own card or whatever it is. Now, I think you guys are going to be really disappointed with my number three pick because it isn't like a new gun or anything. It's a new model of one of my most favorite guns that's been around since 1977, the Steyr AUG, or AUG. Steyr was showing off the new AUG SWAT model, which incorporates a lot of modern features, mainly in the form of additional segments of rail, a better optics mounting platform, and an integrated flip-up iron sights. And now with the civilian version, what you see here, with the rails with, where you have here, this is completely different like the older models, mm -hmm. you know? You have, a, have here a, a, a different, um, as well, a different um, um, size of possibilities to put a laser on a flashlight or whatever. Right, and it looks like the hardware is the same. You just kind of exactly. removed, you kind of removed you can, the remove usual it. foregrip. Exactly. And, you can move it and have another extra. So we have a couple of different civil models, and this is not a full auto model. And uh, it's very difficult here to, for the civilian, it's nearly impossible you got a full auto uh, uh, system. So, uh, what you can see, we have from now from the factory, 
that uh, when the, the 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 when you're shooting that you're a little bit more safer that the cartridge is falling yeah case deflector exactly yeah, yeah. you see we have more rails we have more possibilities we have An the extended sides, top extended rail, top yeah. rail and we have the sides here as well what is normally not on the other models before right. well, this makes it a little bit easier and I see you've got some key mod attachments. The key mod attachment we have here as well. You also you can as well you can make anything what you want. You can put here inside. Is key mod still very popular in Europe? Uh, half and a half, you can say. Now this wasn't our most popular video, but it was close. So you guys were feeling it too because it did get quite a few views. If the video wasn't that popular, I probably wouldn't have picked this gun. But you guys enjoyed it. You guys watched the video. I love the AUG. I just had to include it. Even though there were some amazing guns at IWA that didn't make this list, like for example, the new Tanfolio sniper rifle, a 10,000 euro straight pull that allegedly shoots 0.2 MOA, that would be a runner up. But now, okay, my favorite gun of the show is going to be number two. That is the SPC223 from B&T. You guys know I love B&T. While this was my favorite rifle of the show, one I'm definitely going to pick up, there was one kind of long gun that was our most popular video of the show so it's got to be our number one we'll get to that in just a second let's talk about this spc223 right now more or less this is bnt hybridizing it's already successful swiss uber rifle the apc 556 or apc 223 but cross-dressing it as an ar-15 and i love it i love this spicy drag queen of a rifle and i want one now here's the interesting thing i don't know how to feel about the one they had at the show versus the one that they're ultimately going to introduce. The one at the show was direct impingement, just like an AR-15. It's a simpler, less expensive, dirtier, but lighter and softer shooting operating system than the short stroke piston used by the APC series, like the APC-223. One drawback of the direct impingement system is that it's not really as tunable as a piston-operated gun, but B&T fixed that with something like a, it was like a seven or eight position adjustment lever at the front of the gun. So you'd get all the benefits of direct impingement plus the ability to fine tune it for use with different types of ammo or with a suppressor if you so wished. That I thought was freaking awesome. Cool as it may be, B&T said that they're going to go with the trusty old short stroke piston system for this gun. It's a little bit less picky than the direct impingement system when it comes to gas adjustment. And that means that they're only going to need a three position gas knob instead of the whatever it was like eight position or 10 position <laughs> that they had on the DI version at the show. Both operating systems have their pros and their cons, but I'd be happy with either. I'm extremely pumped for this gun to get introduced, and it very well could be the TFVTV gun of the year, depending on how it comes out. It's the same lower as the APC223 Pro has, so it, ha is, it is fully ambidextrous. It has a, you can change a normal grips, like AR grips to it, and uh, it takes normal AR magazines. Okay, cool. So AR grips, AR mags, and you've got the, uh, the, SP, or the APC 223 receiver. Got a standard AR charging handle. Now, is this a standard like AR-15 castle nut and a AR-15 buffer tube, AR-15 stock? It's a standard castle nut, yeah, and it, it takes every normal uh, AR. AR stocks, mm -hmm. right. I love short stroke piston rifles. I love the AR-15. Great little merger of the two from one of my favorite manufacturers. All right, let's get to that number one. This list is a bit of a shocker for me. As I said earlier, I'm not a huge CZ guy. I think they make great guns, but they've never really been my thing. So it was kind of a surprise to have them in a top five. But myself, James Reeves, slayer of Turkish shotguns, I would never have imagined that one of the guns to make a top five list was going to be a Turkish shotgun, unless we're talking about the top five worst. But here we are because this was our number one most popular video of Iwa, which I called the Turkish Master Key. Now that's a play on the Knight's Armament underbarrel shotgun known as the Master Key, but the Akdash company calls it the UBS, short for, plainly, the underbarrel shotgun. But this is a unique receiver, a square uh, receiver made for the rifles, uh, and you can easily take the uh, stock out by loosening these screws here and simply attach it to the uh, 
rifle that has a Picatinny rail under the uh, uh, forehand. So this this gun is three plus one. Uh, you can shoot anything with this from let from lethal ones to non-lethal ammunition. Mm -hmm. It's a fun thing. Oh yeah, it seems like a fun thing. So it's a neat little design because not only will it fit on a railed handguard like under your AR-15 or maybe your AK-47 if you're tired of little holes and want to make big holes, but the Octosh company, which also makes grenade launchers, has it rigged up so the UBS fits perfectly under one of their grenade launcher chassis, meaning that you can either use it as a standalone pump shotgun hooked up to one of these grenade launcher chassis, or you can use it as an underbarrel shotgun, as would please God. Now, Turkish shotguns being Turkish shotguns, not really expecting a lot out of this thing, and it may never even get imported to the United States, but sweet baby, geez, I hope it does, because the Octosh company says that this shotgun could be sold as cheaply as $300 at export price. I think I've spent more in a cart of groceries before, and honestly, I've had to choose between milk, bread, eggs, or having a boomstick under my boomstick, fire up the top ramen and loan me 10 bucks because my rent check is headed straight to Istanbul, Sadiq. That's it for the list. That's it for our coverage of EWA. We will have one more video that's going to air on TFB TV Showtime. Make sure you go over there and subscribe to our other show only channel. I had a blast at EWA and dare say, dare say, I think I liked it better than SHOT Show. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we got to do this. We got to pay for this out of our own pocket because you guys support us on Utreon and Subscribestar. Check the description. Again, we lost 1,700 subs pretty much overnight, so we're hurting for it. Help us out. Don't make me push phone games or, or, or herbal or erectile dysfunction cures. Uh, go to Subscribestar.com slash TFBTV or Utreon slash C slash TFBTV so we can maintain our independence. But... We do it all because you guys are watching, so I'm grateful for that, just your viewership. I hope you enjoyed the coverage, guys. Thanks a ton for watching. Take care.